In this chapter, we're going to go ahead and take a look at insertion options, schedule information, render settings, and botanical data of the plant definition. To access all of this information, we need to open up the Edit Plant Definition dialog. The Edit Plant Definition dialog can be accessed in, in many different ways. First, we can go directly to the Plant Tool and the Plant Tool Preferences in the toolbar. Then we just need to select a plant definition and click Edit Plant Definition in the bottom left corner. Alternatively, we can go through the Object Info Palette. We just need to select the plant first. Then we just click the Edit Plant Definition button in the Object Info Palette. In addition to those two options, we can also double click on a placed plant and then just choose to edit the definition. And finally, we can access this information through the Resource Manager as well. First, we'll need to open the Resource Manager by going to Window, Palettes, and then just clicking on Resource Manager. Then we just need to locate the plant, right-click, and choose Edit Definition. Now, do note the plant definition does need to be in the active document for this to work. If it is not in the active document, it will need to be imported first. Now that we've figured out how to get into the plant definition, let's take a look at how to edit this information. First up, we have the insertion options. Insertion options control the default values for spread, height, and spacing. The spread and height are typically set to the average size for the chosen species. Typically, spread and height range information will be displayed underneath these fields, but this will only occur if that information is in the plant data. We're going to take a look at the plant data here in a moment. Now, spacing has some additional options. It could be set to by distance, by distribution rate, or by distribution coverage. By distance has a general spacing setting as well as a row spacing setting. Spacing can be set to fixed, best fit, or count. And row spacing can either be set to the same as spacing or have its own custom value. This will also use the fixed, best fit, or count options. Spacing can also be set by distribution rate, and this will be plants by square feet or square meter. Finally, spacing can also use a distribution coverage. Plants are placed according to the spread with this setting. 100% indicates full coverage. Next up, we have schedule information. Schedule sets general information for the plant. This includes the Latin name, common name, plant tag ID, schedule size, quantity type, and for quantity type, we can set count, drip line area, and boundary area. Then we also have options for price code, price, and a comment section. You can add custom comments to display in either the schedule or the plant tag. In addition to the comment, though, you can display any of this information in a plant schedule or on a plant tag as well. Next, we have Render. Now, Render allows you to configure the 2D styling effects, including outlines and shadows. First up, we here we have Plant Outline and Massing. Here you can choose from different styles of outlines for the plant. Now, as we go through these different options, take a look at this preview in the upper right corner. This will change to show the different effects. So first up for the outline options, we have no outline, which is exactly what it, what it sounds like. There's no outline. Next, we have a tight outline, which is just a single outline right around the plant. Then we have three sketch options. So we have one, two, or three sketch outline choices. And these add additional sketch outlines to the plant to give a more hand-drawn look. The pen attributes of these outlines are controlled through the attributes palette with the plant selected. You can also apply the mass plants option this will hide interior line work and other details of the plants, creating a continuous outline for a plant mass. The 2D attributes of the massed group are controlled by the backmost polygon in the 2D graphics of the plant. If you're not familiar with the different parts of a plant object, specifically the 2D graphics, take a look at the plant definition graphics chapter. The massing option is mainly met when you have a mass of plants or a group of plants you want to show with one continuous shape. This is not meant to be used to hide interior detail work like lines or different bloom options, for instance. For that, you're going to want to use visibility control of the different plant component classes. Again, all of this is covered in the previous chapter. 
If you want to see an individual rendering for each plant though, you do want to leave this option unchecked. Next under Render, we have Plan Shadows. These settings control a 2D shadow effect. This effect only appears in a top plan view. You can choose to use a universal document-wide shadow setting or set a custom shadow uh, per plant. The document plan shadow settings are accessed through the Settings button or by going to File, Document Settings, Document Preferences, then Plant Shadows. Whether you set a document-wide plan shadow setting or a custom setting, the options are the same. The offset, angle, fill style, and opacity can all be adjusted. The offset can be set using page units, document units, or a factor of the plant height. The factor of plant height option will calculate the offset based on the height set for the plant in the insertion options. This is great for getting a realistic varied shadow effect. The angle is set by an exact angle value or by using the slider to adjust the angle. Zero degrees here is straight up. Fill style can be set to a solid color, hatch, image fill, gradient, or tile. The fill can also be set by a class attribute setting. The opacity percentage can be set directly or by using the slider. There are options to use a class opacity setting, as well as options to show under the canopy if needed. You will want to note that choosing a custom setting for the shadow options will override the document plan shadow setting. For a consistent look, it's a good idea to go ahead and set the plan shadows directly through the document preference setting. Next, we have the plant data category. This contains all the data for the plant. This includes the basic information like Latin and common name, as well as more detailed information like tolerances, as well as water and soil needs. All of this data can be entered manually or pulled from the Vectorworks plant database. We're going to cover how to pull plant data from the plant database in another chapter. For now, we're going to go ahead and look at how to enter in data manually per field. To do this, you'll just select the field from the list, then enter the data in the value box at the bottom. You can also click the Edit button to more easily enter longer comments. That wraps up this section on settings and plant data. All the information and settings found here are changed in the plant definition and will apply to all instances of this plant in a particular document. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about individual plant settings and how they can vary from the plant definition settings.